Psalm 83. <clears throat> you know, I'm coming from Israel, and thank you for inviting me, Pastor Matt, all you people. It's a privilege to be here again. I'm coming from Israel, so this sound really relates to what I'm going to talk about, partly, and also, again and again, shows how nothing is new under the sun. Psalm 83. A song, a psalm of, of Asaph. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. And I want to pause here and tell you, welcome. You are Israel. Stop illusioning yourself that you are the church, apart, separated from Israel. If you're not part of Israel that he speaks about it here, then what are you doing, it, what are you doing here in the first place to begin with? This is the Jewish Bible. This is, uh, if, you did not, if you have not grafted in or been grafted in to the olive tree, what are you doing here? Okay, it's not a new, re new religion. You are part of the deal. Amen. For good and for bad, yeah? So start to think like those verses speak about you here in Florida. Okay? For they have counseled together with consent. They form a confederacy against you, the tents of Edom. And you know, in Yeshua's time, Edom actually, the meaning Edom extended more than just the mountains of Edom, you know, or Mount of Seir, just on the east side of Israel, uh, you know, near the Arava plain, if you know what I'm talking about, in the south section of Israel, southern region of Israel, but it extended all the way to Rome. You know, Rome was considered Edom, the enemies of Israel. Okay? And she spoke about Cornelius in Caesarea. Caesarea was considered little Edom because the Roman governor controlled Judea from Caesarea, okay, where Cornelius lived. So the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the <coughs> Agrites, Gval, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tzor, Tyre, Assyria, Ashur, also joined them. They have helped the children of Lot, Selah. Deal with them as with Midian as with Sisera, as with Yavin at the brook Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became as refuse on the earth. Make their nobles like Orev and Zehev. Yes, all their princes like Zehev and Salmuna, who said, let us take for ourselves their pastures, the pastors of God for a possession. Again, there are different levels in God's world, my friends. If you take it only as a historic psalm, then it speaks about physical Israel, about 10,000 miles away. Are you with me? Yes. But you are Israel. Yes. And once the temple was in Jerusalem, now the temple is here. So start to try to think while I'm talking, all this talk, all this preaching, teaching, in those three levels, if I may say, okay? There. Israel level, this nation, little, little Israel, then Israel us, then Israel our bodies. Okay? So the enemies are not going only on the level of Israel. Soon I will prove it. They are going also on the spiritual level, this place. Not this place, but this place, yeah? And our very being, okay? Our very flesh, the Temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, verse 13, make them like the whirling dust, <clears throat> like the chaff before the wind, as the fire burns the woods, and as the flame sets the mountains on fire, so pursue them with your tempest, and frighten them with your storm. Fill their faces with shame, 
that they may seek your name, O God. And this is the beauty in who God is, actually. You know, we think to destroy the enemies and destroy them completely and just bury them and just dash them with our feet, right? Amen. God actually goes against the enemies, so some of them will seek his face and will be saved. That's the beauty of the God that we serve. He's the God of the, all the earth. No, he's not the God of the Jews alone. Amen. And his desire is that all of us will, be, will come to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus, right? Okay? His son. Let them be confounded and dismayed forever, yes. Let them be put to shame and perish, that they may know that you, whose name alone is Yahweh, translated as Lord, are the most high over all the earth. Amen? Now immediately to Matthew 16. That's the passage that we are going to deal with mostly. Matthew 16. And intentionally I want to read only one verse like out of context. Matthew 16, 16. Then we will elaborate on it some more. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Can we say amen to it? Amen. Do we believe in it? Well, we will check ourselves later on in a deeper way, okay? Because this is not a dogma here. I'm not going to teach you the, some creeds, Christian creeds. Do you believe that Yeshua is the Son of God? He's the second in the Godhead? Yes. I don't even ask you this. Because this is less important. But what this very confession, Peter's confession, really mean to you? That's the point. Not if you believe in your head. If you know who is God or the Godhead or that he is the Messiah, this is not the point at all. And I'm going to prove it to you. Black and white, on white. Okay, my beloved. <clears throat> you know, it's not a secret that the world is going down, right? Yeah. It's not a secret that the world is, actually the world eyes are focused and more and more focused on Israel, right? Yeah. Why is it, yeah? Uh, <clears throat> and... There is, it's not a secret also that the, the modern war will not be so much by invading, you know, nation invading another nation, okay? But the real threat in the modern war is, come on, missiles, right? So I want to start in the, physic, in the, start in the physical realm, you remember, literal Israel? and show you some of the threats on Israel today. My friend Jonathan, this is the time for the website. <laughs> I found this website and you will see why I like it so much. Let's start with Israel. This is Israel, yeah? <clears throat> Where are you? In the West Bank, yeah? Look only at the West Bank. This is the West Bank, by the way, yeah? All of this, the green area, the West Bank. You see, by the way, how much percentage it takes out of all Israel, yeah? Quite a big one. And actually, it is the very heart of biblical Israel. Okay? It includes Jerusalem over here, or at least half of it, yeah? My friends, look only the threats that we have right now by missiles which are already existing in the West Bank. You see? This shows you the range that they cover. It's clear, right? Let's go to the Gaza Strip. Here is the Gaza, Gaza Strip. By the way, here you have the Kassam range, 6 to 12 kilometers, okay? the Grad, Rage, okay? And you can see how much it covers only from this small little area, the Gaza, okay? Let's go to northern Israel. And here you can see, by the way, go there, no, uh, uh, Jonathan. Thank you. Yeah, push it. Good. My beloved, look only from Lebanon. We are covered by the missiles held and owned by the Hezbollah, this Shiite terrorist organization. You are familiar, right? This is Lebanon. Look where their missiles re uh, reach, Beersheba. Quite scary, right? Let's go now to the Middle East. <clears throat> and let's see only the Syrian threat. This is Syria. And look there, SCAD missiles. This is the range. Do you see how it covers 
almost all Israel, almost to the tip of the Red Sea. Quite impressive, huh? Now let's go and see that Israel is not the only one which is threatened. Actually, it goes all the way here to the United States of America. Let's start with Iran. Okay, this is Iran. And let's see their, the least of their <coughs> missiles that they have, the Shia 3. And look what it covers. This is Israel over here. This is Iran. And look how it covers parts of Turkey, right? Turkey. Not to speak about Asia, okay, and almost to India. But this is not yet the threat. Look at the Shiab 3L. Do you see? Now Jerusalem and even Cairo are covered. Let's go to the KH-55 that they have. This is all that they have in their possession. Okay? Look at this. 3,000 kilometers. Do you see that half of Europe is covered? Now, if you, th if you thought this is the end of the story, go to DBM. Look now. Paris and Madrid are inside the range. Clear? Look to the other one, the last one. Where are you, North America? New York. Is it only Israel's problem? Okay, thank you, Jonathan. So, what all of this has to do with you are the Messiah, the son of the living God that we just read? Go back with me to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. And let's read it this time in its context. <coughs> Verse 13, 13, Matthew 16, 13. When Yeshua came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do, you, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. By the way, did you notice that all the names that they gave relate to Prophets? Who was the greatest, the greatest prophet according to Yeshua's own words? Come on. John the Baptist. He was a prophet, right? Elijah was a prophet. You remember? Oh, you know, God raised one of the prophets. Did you notice? Why? Why prophets? Because of the context. Look at verse 1. Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees came, testing him, asked, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be fall weather today, for the sky is red and uh, threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the time.'" 